Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning again. Good morning, sir. So today, we are, I'm going to, uh, to, to, to make you aware what you are going to do in the forthcoming driving exams and uh, even the preparations because things go uh, changing. So we expect we have new things to, 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 to prepare on as a uh, as student who went to a driving course. So are you ready, students? Yes. So thank you very much, and God bless you. So I'm telling you uh, that is on Thursday. We are going for uh, driving exams. So number one, make sure you be very smart. So you get officially dressed because this is considered to be uh, like a, a government interview. So you must present, represent yourself, you must present yourself in a good way, showing that truly you are prepared in that field. So uh, uh, after that, remember to come very early in the morning so that we prepare you well, so that we make you uh, get aware what uh, is going to happen the whole day. So make sure you come early, that is very important. Also, please, uh, make sure you come with your BDL because this is a driving license for students. Make sure you come with your BDL, make sure you come with your national identity card and make sure you get prepared mentally that you are going to sit for your driving course exams. So uh, those are the important things and uh, uh, the things, uh, the questions you are going to be asked are those questions that we have prepared you. We know you are aware. For example, today I'm going to take you through this model town board and a few oral questions. Is that clear? So to start with, I'll ask uh, a few questions about uh, oral. Then I take you to uh, road signs. Then I'll, I'll be able to say whether or not you are ready. So thank you, and this is how we started. Now, uh, as a student, you need to know first what is a model town board. So if a person asks you what is a model town board, you should be able to say what a model town board is, OK? Then you should be able to speak as you drive. You must speak as you drive because that is called commentary driving. Now, for example, uh, if, you, if you'll be asked, now drive this white car to be behind this red car, then there is a language to use. Number one, there is a language to use. Number one, number two, there is what you are required to, to do. Now, for example, we ask you not to carry a, a toy car. For example, you are not supposed to place it properly. For example, it is placed this way, then you come to put it this way. It is not allowed. Then you need to talk, as I said earlier. Now, this is how you should do it. I'll put on the engine of my vehicle, then start moving, start moving, then continue, then slow down, then remember to keep a distance, then you'll be behind the red car. That is exactly what we are expected to do on our model town board. So sometimes it can be placed here. Then you are asked, drive the white car to be behind the red car. This is what you should do. You say, I'll boot on the engine of my vehicle, start moving, as I indicate to change lanes, as I indicate to change lanes, then I'll keep a distance, or you keep a distance uh, of 70 meters, then you'll be behind the red car. That is how it should be done. Now, what about if this vehicle is placed here and your vehicle is here? Then an examiner asks you to drive the white car to be behind the red car. So there are uh, quite a number of things to consider. So number one, you should know which lane that can bring you here. So for example now, you put on the engine of your vehicle, 
then start moving, indicate to change lanes, proceed, stop. On the roundabout, we look on the right hand side, then we make a U turn, then proceed, proceed, make sure you don't uh, crash, you don't, uh, you don't put other people in danger, indicate right, join the immediate lane, then indicate to change lanes as you proceed. Remember this is a junction. Slow down and stop. Look right, look left. If there's no danger, then cross the road and turn. You stop for pedestrians to cross, proceed, then indicate right, join the immediate lane, then proceed, proceed, slow down and stop. Look on the right hand side, then proceed to lane three, then you'll be behind the red car and you'll get marks. So you must be very careful because sometimes it looks tricky. Now what about a case where you are told to drive the red vehicle behind the white vehicle? This is now what you're supposed to do. So you put on the engine of your vehicle, then make a O-turn, then proceed, 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 indicate to join the immediate lane, then indicate to change lanes, then stop, okay, look right, left, right again, then cross the road, then stop for pedestrians to cross because that is their right, then proceed, then proceed, then keep a distance, then you'll have got a mark. Thank you. Now what about if your vehicle is placed there and you are, this one is on the second lane of a one-way traffic road minor. Now this is what you are supposed to do as a student who truly went to a driving course. Now you put on the engine of your vehicle, proceed to lane two, proceed, then proceed to lane two after the roundabout indicate to change lanes, then look right, left, right again, then indicate and turn, proceed, you stop for pedestrians, proceed, indicate and turn, okay? Proceed, then join the immediate lane, proceed, as you change lanes, please remember to indicate. Then make a, a U-turn, then proceed, proceed, Indicate and turn, join the immediate lane. Indicate to change lanes, proceed, stop, look right, left, right again, cross the road and stop for pedestrians to cross, proceed. Remember to join the immediate lane, then indicate to change lanes, then you'll get a mark. That is the business we do. Now, for example, you are told this vehicle is here, and another one is here. Then you are told, drive the white car, drive the white car behind the red car. This is what you do. You put on the engine of your vehicle, proceed, slow down and stop, then give way for pedestrians. Then come, indicate and turn, proceed, proceed, then join the immediate lane then indicate to change lanes, proceed. After making sure the roundabout is safe, proceed, proceed, then you stop, then indicate join the immediate lane, then indicate to change lanes, then slow down and stop. Look on the right hand side, left hand side, then right hand side twice. Then if the junction is safe, you cross the road and turn. Now, there are things to look at on this model town board. Remember to stop where you are supposed to stop. Remember to give way where you are supposed to give way. Avoid stopping where you are not supposed to stop. For example, now, you cannot stop on the middle of the road. You cannot stop on the middle of the road. But you can stop on a junction to give way. And you cannot stop on a junction to make passengers alight. Or you cannot stop on a junction 
Then you start smoking or reading a magazine. You stop on a junction to give way. Then you should know where to overtake and where not to overtake. For example now, on white broken lines or white dotted lines, you are allowed by the law, you are allowed to change lanes, you are allowed to overtake, you are allowed to do all these things. If at all, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, you have a reason to do so. Thank you. Now we have white continuous lines. In white continuous lines, whatsoever, you cannot change lanes, you cannot overtake, and you cannot be overtaken. That is the meaning of white broken lines and white dotted lines. Now, that is what should be done. I want to talk about uh, the, 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 the roundabout and the lanes. Lanes are so connected to the roundabout that if you use the first lane, make sure you use the first lane, then proceed to the first lane. Number two, you use the second lane before the roundabout. In the roundabout, you use the second lane. Then after the roundabout, you use the second lane. Then the third lane has two options. Of course, you join lane three because you are coming from lane number three. Proceed and go straight. The second option, you come to lane three, then you come to lane two. Now, what is the reason why you should go lane three after the roundabout and you should go to lane two after the roundabout? Remember lanes from major to minor, they are not equal. But lanes from major to major, they are always equal. That is why when we move from lane one, we join one, we go one. We go two, we join two, we go two. We go to three, we join three, we go to three. When we go to four, we join four, but go round, then go straight. That is what it means. Now when we come from major to minor, now it varies. Now in, it means you'll move from number three, you join to three, then you go to two. So that a person coming from four joins four, then he'll go to three. Since we don't have the fourth one on one way traffic road, minor. So remember all these things and you'll be safe. Now, there's something I want to talk about, uh, uh, rules of the roundabout. Now, rule number one, remember, you cannot change lanes. You cannot overtake in the roundabout. You cannot stop. You cannot reverse. Okay? You cannot change lanes. And all these are the rules of the roundabout. Then, if you remember that one and you'll uh, do what is required always you'll get marks and uh, you'll be counted a winner now how what what is the use of yellow continuous lines and the yellow uh, dotted lines on a two-way traffic road remember on a yellow continuous line on a yellow continuous line we cannot overtake we cannot uh, change lanes, okay? We cannot cross. On a yellow continuous lines, it means it divides a two-way traffic road. Now, if it is divided by a two-way, I mean by a yellow continuous line, then it will mean we have yellow dotted lines. What are we supposed to do on yellow dotted lines? In yellow dotted lines, for example here on a junction, after looking right, left, right again, you are allowed by the law to cross the road and turn if it is safe. So where there are yellow dotted lines on a two-way traffic road and there is no junction, then you can overtake, then you can be overtaken if it is safe to do so. So I wish to say few parts of our model town board because it is very necessary. Remember, this is vegetation. We call this one vegetation. Remember, uh, these ones, we call them vegetation. That is what I mean. Then we call this one a central pavement. That one is called a central pavement. 
If anyone asks you, if a, an instructor asks you, if, for example, an examiner asks you, what is this, then tell him this is a central pavement. Then we also have what we call, uh, we have what we call yellow painted caps. Yellow painted caps, you don't also stop, you don't wait, you don't uh, overtake on such areas. This means you need to use the road and continue moving. Now, let, us, let me talk about uh, parking zones. Remember, we have two types of parking zones. Number one, we have what we call controlled parking zone. Controlled parking zone sometimes can be called angle parking zone. And sometimes it can be called humble parking zone. And sometimes we call it secured parking zone. So in angle parking zone, I want to talk about four points, main points. Number one, you must park from far left. If you are the first person to enter in controlled parking zone, you need to go far left. Then your entrance must not be your exit. For example, if you use this as an entrance, there is no miracle that can be done for you to get outside using an exit. So we park using a forward gear and we move out <coughs> using a reverse gear. Then we park in an angle way, okay? We park in an angle way. Then now, if for example, there is a vehicle ahead of you, if a vehicle has gone ahead of you, then what are you supposed to do as a person again who undertook these lessons? Now, you cannot go far left, but instead, you are supposed to go far next. So sometimes, they may test you when you get a vehicle like this. Remember, this is an entrance because there is no dotted lines. This is an entrance because there is no dotted lines. This is an exit, remember, because there are dotted lines. This is an exit, remember, because there are dotted lines. Now, if you enter this way, you find this vehicle, it means you cannot go beyond. The place is full. If you use the other way around, we also say the place is full, which means there is no place left for you to park. Is that correct? So thank you. Now, uh, let me go to fresh parking zone. In fresh parking zone, we park, we park uh, heavy vehicles and saloon cars. In this control, I mean, uh, uh, fresh parking zone, it is found in town. In CBD, you can find this type of parking zone. Now you'll find a heavy vehicle and a light vehicle. Now, I told you in the controlled parking zone, we park using a forward gear, but in fresh parking zone, we park using a reverse gear. So we enter using a forward gear, we enter using a reverse gear. We get out using a reverse gear, we get out using a forward gear. No, now those are the differences that must come to you. Also, this one is uncontrolled and also unsecured. Sometimes we say you park at your own risk, okay? So thank you very much. Those are a few things I wanted to remind you for those students who are going for exams the, the, the other day, the, the tomorrow but one. So thank you very much. Now I wish to ask you questions so that I can see how prepared you are. So are you ready, students? Yes. Are you very ready? Why am I not seeing you joyous? <coughs> now, the first question. What is the rule of the road in Kenya? Let me see hands. Many hands, please. The rule of the road in Kenya. So when I point to you, you stand up, please. You. Thank you, thank you. So the rule of the road in Kenya always keep left unless 
overtaking. Now, uh, we also know, we need to know what is a junction. Now, what is a junction? Let me see hands. What is a junction? What is a junction? Thank you. Tell us what is a junction. Tell us your name and what is a junction. So, a junction is where two or more roads meet. Okay. When are you not allowed to drive a vehicle even if you have valid documents? Let me see hands. You have documents, but you cannot drive. When you are under medication. Get up, get up. When you are under medication. When you are under medication, correct? When you are ordered by a court of law. When ordered by a court of law, you cannot drive. Besides having valid documents. Another one? When you are drunk. When I am drunk, I cannot drive. Another one? Sick. When sick, you cannot uh, drive. Now, okay. So we say when sick, we cannot uh, drive. Now, within which period? Are we supposed to report an accident? Within which period are we supposed to report an accident? Within 24 hours or immediately. So it's supposed to be immediately or within 24 hours. Now, what is the meaning of A, B, C, D, E, F as a driver's song? What is the meaning of A, B, C, D, E, F? as a driver's song. It means always be careful, don't even forget. Always be careful, don't even forget. Now, in case of an accident, injuring a person, APC means what? APC means what? Air breathing, Air breathing consciousness. Okay, thank you. Now, what is the difference between a heavy commercial vehicle and a light vehicle? What is the, the, the difference between heavy commercial vehicles and the light vehicles? Heavy commercial Thank you. Now, what is the difference between a tire and a wheel. The difference between a tire and a wheel. Let me see hands, please. A tire is a combination of a wheel and rim. Mm -hmm. While a tire? A tire and a wheel. Okay. Well, a wheel is the rubber part that comes in touch with the road. Yes. Thank you. So the difference between a wheel and a tire is that uh, a wheel uh, is uh, a combination of a tire, rim, and even tube, and even pressure. Now we call it uh, a wheel. Now a tire, it is the outer part of a wheel that comes in contact with the road service. Okay. Which parts of a vehicle that must be uh, maintained always? Always you must maintain these parts. Steering wheel. Yeah, steering wheel. Brakes. Clutch. Clutch. Lights. Brakes. Brakes. Mirrors. Now, uh, what is the use of a computer in our uh, car engines? Computer system. <coughs> what is the use of it? Computer system. So we, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, computer systems help us in the case of knowing that our fuel uh, as a uh, has come down, the level of our, of our, our fuel has come down, 
or we did not close our car doors, or we, we did not close our booth or our bonnet. We get all this information while in the, in the car, so you know it through the work of uh, computer systems. So between a uniformed traffic police officer and the traffic lights, who do you pay more and why? It is a uniform traffic police officer because always it is mandatory. Okay. Now there is that road sign that says uh, stop for customs. That is number 28. Where can you find that road sign? Where can you find that road sign? When when you are entering another country, you need to uh, you need to know that this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of road sign that we can find. Okay. Now, I also need to ask you uh, how our road signs are classified and how our road signs are grouped. Please, you stand up and you talk loud. Okay? You make sure you talk loud. We have three classes of road signs, A, B, and C. That's regulatory. We have warning and informative. And we have also five groups. That's priority. We have mandatory, I mean, prohibitory, mandatory, then warning, Yes, there are all five. So what we need to say here is that we have three classes of road signs. That is class A, B, and C. So class A, it is called regulatory. Class B, warning. Then class C, informative. Okay? Then now we have five groups, of course. As he said, group one, it is called a priority. Group uh, two, it is called prohibitory. Group three, it is called compulsory. Group four, it is called warning road signs. Then lastly, uh, group five, it is called uh, informatory. So that is how it goes. Now, mistakes people make when holding a steering. Which mistakes people make when holding a steering? Please talk loud. Using one hand. People use one hand when driving. People use elbows when driving. People use people hold steering too tightly. Family. Crisscrossing hands is a mistake. If caught, you can be jailed or fined. Uh huh. Now, how do we hold a steering clockwise? How? Do we all are staring clockwise? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Meaning what? Uh. When we are we are on low speed or high speed, how do we all are staring? Thank you. Now, which mistakes people make when using the roundabout? Talk loud, stand up. Talk loud, stand up. Changing of lane. Yeah, people change lanes in the roundabout is a mistake. People overtake in the roundabout is a mistake. People approach the roundabout using a wrong lane. People stop on the roundabout is a mistake. People park on the roundabout is a mistake. Okay? So I think uh, finally, uh, this is the last question. I'm asking you now, how many lights has a saloon car? How many lights has a saloon car? 
eight lights of a saloon car and peel out. We have brake lights. We have hazard lights. We have indicator lights. We have interior lights. We have parking lights. We have reverse lights. Number plate lights. Okay? So these are the things that you should know as a, 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 a driver and you'll be a very successful uh, driver. So I, I need to talk about safety on our roads uh, as, a, as, a, as it is usually done. So my name is Albert Ratemo, an instructor. So I've been going around seeing how our, uh, uh, our people are using our roads. Uh, sincerely, we are asking the authorities uh, to be more vigilant and to, to work more hard because uh, the roads has uh, made our people lose lives. We need one another every day. We don't want to lose anyone. And uh, we must continue training others how to use roads in a better way. And everybody should be responsible on our roads. And of course, our roads should be repaired day and again, and uh, time and again. And also, we should uh, take driving courses to our students back in school and also in colleges for everybody to understand and to know very well how the road is supposed uh, to be used. Because by so doing, I know we reduce uh, accidents. And especially towns, we need to decongest towns. We need to know uh, roads that make vehicles enter town and the vehicles that move vehicles out so that we can be organized and we reduce accidents as few as possible. So, and uh, also, uh, we, 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 we ask those who are owning vehicles to make sure that they are repaired all the times. At all times, make sure your vehicle is supposed to be okay on the road. Make sure you repair your vehicle, make sure you take it to, to the service when it is required, and make sure you also respect other road users. Don't, don't try to abuse people on the road. This can reduce uh, uh, jams on our roads. And uh, also, I need to advise on, uh, on these people who, are you, who park in town. Parking in town actually should be done in a better way than now, because you find some people uh, uh, parking in, in town. They make other people not using the roads properly in town, in CBD. We need to, 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 to work out this, and we need to, to be serious about this. Uh, also, our motorbikes must be controlled so that everybody's life must be realized it is precious. So I don't have much. Thank you very much. God bless you always, and be safe on our roads. Thank you. God bless you.